Greetings, and welcome to another episode of Tell It Like It Is. I'm your host, Morris Man, and my co-host, Joseph Spencer. And today we're going to do two topics. The first one is, because they tie in together, the first one is cameras in the courtroom, yes or no, are they necessary, how are they beneficial? The second topic is high-speed police chases, are they necessary, you know, because lately uh, high-speed pursuits have gotten innocent people killed. You know, so is it that important to, to apprehend or chase a petty criminal and kill someone who had nothing to do with it and then blame it on the guy you're chasing? Because in, in Chicago, they just uh, had courtroom TV at this young 22-year-old guy who's basically a petty thief, and the police is in pursuit of him, and in the process of trying to apprehend him, they killed someone, and they charged him with the murder. You know, and, uh, and, and, and it's unfortunate because... I look at it this way, and I'll make it short because I'm going to let you chime in. Uh, they show this young man, you know, getting his verdict, and uh, they're giving him an additional, like, 15 years for that. And it's sad because we talk about this all the time. The root issue for our young black men is they don't have men in the house to take care of them. Their mothers didn't marry their fathers like your father did in mine back in the era we grew up in. And, uh, you know, and that's just a household full of women trying to raise a man, which is almost impossible because a man has to raise a man, you know, not a woman. And when they panned over uh, during the court hearing, unfortunately, they showed his family and they consisted of none but women. His mother was there, perhaps uh, an auntie and sisters, and then it was a little child, a little girl. And nothing stresses me out or saddens me quicker, Joe, than to see a child in distress. Because I'm sitting here looking at this little girl sitting in a courtroom for a murder trial, you know, and a burglary trial when she should be somewhere playing. It's unfortunate that, you know, that she was there. And also, I'm looking at this and I don't see a man in the audience. I don't see his daddy in the audience. I don't see an uncle in there because there was no man in his house. And we talk about this all the time. That's the real problem. And, and I'm gonna say this and then let you tell me in. Uh, you know, we got, uh, the mayor of Chicago who's running for another term, and then we have some people just running, you know, against him. And the mayor and another person that's running against him make this same statement. And it's just unfortunate that how uh, out of touch they are with the public in reality because they both make this claim, and you've heard this before, Joe. I heard it a million times. If I'm elected or reelected, I'm going to put a thousand cops on the, on the street. The problem is not that the city is police deficient. The problem is the city is job deficient. If, if you give, put jobs out there in the communities for these young guys, they won't commit as many, many crimes. Crime will automatically go down because crime is the last alternative, not the first choice for most people. When they run out of other options, they, rely, they, they fall back on that, the last option, which is crime. You know, so it's unfortunate that we live in, in a day and era that people just still don't get this. You know, it's not about putting more cops on the street. It's about putting more jobs on the street so these people stop committing crimes. But I'll turn it over to you and give your, your insight on this. Crime is too much work. First, you got to find the goods to steal. You got to steal it. You got to get away from, get away with it. Then you probably got to flip it. A job, you go to the job, you work five, six days, seven, whatever, and you get your check, you go home. Yeah. So what do you think about the cameras? Should there I, I, be cameras in the courtroom? I, I think be? it's a sensational, it, yeah. it, we live in a reality world. Yeah, it's a television, I mean, we try to make everything out of a television show here. Television it's like, show. what's going to be next? We're going to turn on our TVs and see murders? Yeah. You know, uh, I think that that's a private situation. It should stay private. You know, I, uh, I, don't, I don't get any benefit out of watching this young man lose basically his life because this is how I look at it. I'm in my 50s now and you're the age you are. And I can say this because I'm at the stage of my life that I can make this statement. The best years of your life, for the most part, is in your 20s up until your 40s. Because yeah. by the time you start to get in your late 40s, you start having major problems, health issues. And then when you get in your 60s, you have more issues and you might even have surgery. <coughs> and when you're younger, you're on the upcline as opposed to... <coughs> on the decline. And, right, when you get in your 50s, and I'm not trying to sound negative. But, you know, everything's kind of going, you know, you're declining. You're not regenerating. People, they go into nursing homes, that's their last stage of life. They're not getting better and leaving and going back to work. You know, so it's unfortunate that this man, the best time of his life, or the best years of his life are going to be taken away from him because there was no father in the household to raise these men. And uh, I don't blame 
I'm not pointing blame at one specific group. It's collectively they're at fault. You know, uh, these women need to stop having babies with these guys that they're not going to have committed relationships with. These guys got to be taught that uh, you shouldn't be spreading your seed all over the city and you're not going to plan to settle down and take care of your children and have a vested interest in their development. You know, you know, it's just a sex game. I'm trying to get me something. I'm trying to get out of here. That's a good thing. That's a good yeah. it's a sport. But, you know, again, it falls back on your upbringing because we mentioned this in another show. If you were to pull a kid off the street right now and say, uh, you know, well, in the 60s, pull a kid off the street and say, uh, draw your family structure. That person, the child is your mama, daddy, and themselves. And you ask the child in 2015 to draw them family structure, black family, uh, that child is your mama, themselves, and then grandmama. Because now grandmother is the new father. I coined the phrase the surrogate uh, father, which is grandmother now. She then stepped out of her role of being a traditional grandparent and now playing daddy to their to, to her grandkids which is ridiculous you know we need to pull back and get that structure back that we had that a mother a father committed relationship here comes the babies as opposed to I'm kicking it with this guy for the for a year or two I'm having babies he gone I'm back at my mama house and she helped me raise my child there there are women just completely drop their kids off on their mother yeah and they allow I've that. Seen that yeah because uh, unfortunately sometimes I see this there comes a time when your kids leave. You know, I got married, I left my mother's house, started my own family. She uh, encouraged that. She was not trying to lay a guilt trip on me or keep me there, because that's the thing now. I don't want to be lonely by myself. Find a, a companion yourself, as opposed to using your kids now as, as uh, to take up your time and taking away from their development. You see, you, 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 you were blessed that your mother was, was uh Independent. My mother, she, she, she tried to teach us that uh, we were nothing without her, you know. But she still yeah. took care of you. She wasn't trying to keep you there and not let you allow to grow. She was trying to keep us there. Well. Uh, I don't mean to get off. Yeah, no, but different families have different structures. But, yeah, but you know, it's nothing like today. Because, yeah. I mean, today uh, these women are still out there partying and dropping their oh, kids yeah. off at of grandmama's they, house. They it's like that era is over, baby. I, the, I, the, the disco thing is done for you. You know, it's, you it's 40 done. some years old and you still out there at the club. Yeah, 40 and, something, man. And, 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 your, and your kids are with your mama at your mama house or at, at my, with mama because you live with mama too. But again, we're not picking on <laughs> uh, the women because it takes two to tangle. You know, uh, uh, unfortunately, these young women have not been raised properly neither because no. they didn't have their father in the house. And these young guys didn't have their father, so therefore they get together and create chaos as opposed to a, uh, a mature responsible household. But let's move over to the next topic. The next topic is high-speed police chases, and it ties in with just the topic we talked about because, again, that man now, young 22-year-old man, is being charged with the murder of the lady that the police got, the police squad car hit. You know, should we stop this madness? Because this is not a scene from a uh, Dukes of Hazzard TV show where you flying down the street at 100 miles an hour, your car up in the air in slow motion. You know, this is one of the largest cities in the world, and it's really difficult to try to apprehend somebody doing 90 miles an hour with a bunch of people out there. You know, this guy was a petty criminal, and they could have easily caught him the next day or two because it wasn't like he was a rich dude going to flee the country. Yeah. You know, so it's unfortunate that uh, this is what's going to probably happen. You know, every, since they uh, found him guilty, it, they're going to kind of say, well, this is the norm, and it, or it's okay for us to go out there and chase these people and kill other people because guess what? We're going to blame it on the guy we're chasing. I really don't think that that's fair. I don't you know? think it's fair either. I mean, uh, and the family I, don't need it. They're suing the police. I was, I was just reading my mind, Joe, because I'm saying if that was my sister that got killed by, you know, by, with that situation, I wouldn't be extremely pissed with the guy that they were chasing. I'd be pissed at the cops. I, I feel that the cops... Uh, uh, but uh, let me just say this, out of defense of law enforcement officers, uh, they're out there doing their best, and uh, they're not trying to be the bad guy, you know, but you do have to kind of rethink about uh, the priority. You know, is it that important? Because it's different if uh, a man just killed a couple of cops or anybody. Yeah, we got to get him off the street today, you know, but petty criminals, s s snatching and stealing stuff, Killing somebody else in pursuit of this guy that he probably can catch in another day or two? I truly I don't believe, think so. I truly believe the police had uh, control over that situation. 
You know, I, I think they handled it wrong, whatever whatever they... they, they and, and they're not perfect, because, again, right. uh, we're not trying to, you know, give law enforcement a hard time because they're right. heroes out I, in the I'm street. I'm just a citizen, and I, I've saw stuff where, where my drilling went up, yeah. you know. And I'm quite sure if you, when I was in the middle stuff, personal stuff, my drill would go up and you handle stuff differently, you know. Absolutely. You know, and, and, and uh, I'm quite sure a lot of police officers, when they see something go down, so let's get this sucker, the nerve, you yeah, know. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know? Uh, the, like you said, the adrenaline is pumping. Sometimes yeah. you don't make uh, rational decisions. You know, it's unfortunate, but I do believe they need to kind of revisit that to say, yeah. uh, is it that important to catch this guy and kill someone? Yeah. As opposed to, we're going to catch him in a day or two they, because they, they could have drove their car in an accident. Their car could have went through a, a, a business or something, yeah. a restaurant, anything, yeah. daycare center, anything. Yeah. And another point I wanted to make before uh, that thought gets, gets away from me is uh, we were talking about the cameras in the courtrooms. Yeah. And uh, that whole camera thing in, in, in war, you know, these uh, journalists are going over there and getting their head chops off. And uh, a lot of people don't realize that journalism is a very competitive industry Terrific. and it's not like these guys really had a big choice because a lot of people are like well they volunteer they volunteer for the most part because if they don't take that assignment mm -hmm. they co-worker gonna get it get an award get his job so you kind of forced to do that but before journalists were going out there and, and taking these pictures it was military officials yep, you know, military, it was, yeah. right it, it wasn't laymen running out there with cameras we're because down. this is a war this is not a scripted yeah. movie yeah I, I, I've seen I, I've seen the, the cameras the military used to use yeah doing World War two I mean I personally don't think cameras should be involved in that anyway it's like uh I'm it's, like forget give me a camera give me a rifle well, because they had that too, I'm, I'm fighting for my life <laughs> here they, they had that too I don't have time military. to be running here and taking pictures of, of things blowing up. I want a gun so I can take care of myself. You know, but but that, it's a part of a, a, a documentary. It's, it's a part of history. Yeah. Most wars are. Yeah. But I, to me, it's just more important to have a gun as opposed to a camera. You know, it's, <laughs> unless we've come to a, a, an agreement in war that if we see a guy with a camera, don't shoot him. You know, but we ain't gonna come to that agreement. That. You know as always, we enjoy doing these, and and, and it's about enlightening young folks yeah. as far as the things that we talk about because you don't know what you don't know. You know, and unfortunately, uh, this is an era now, especially in the black community, that uh, these young men don't have a father. Mm -hmm. You know, they can't go home and get advice from a mature, stabilized adult because there's no mature, stabilized adult at home. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just mom and grandmama. You know, so unfortunately, you know, until we can fix that problem, we're going to continue to have these other problems with young guys out there robbing, stealing, mm -hmm. you know, uh, gang banging. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, their mama can't raise them because these are men and men need men, mm -hmm. you know. But on that note, I'm going to sign off because we got to go. Yeah. Keep thinking. Yeah. Have a good night. Be blessed.